What's up everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Marvel Legends exclusive Mojo World box set. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, or even hit the super thanks button. I appreciate all engagement on my channel. The entire box is made in an old school TV deco, with the X-Men branding logo at the top right, a couple of dials over here, and the TV speaker at the bottom right, with the Marvel Legends branding as well. On screen, we have a cool artwork of Mojo together with his main stars, Dazzler and Longshot, plus that Mojo World logo at the bottom. The entire TV box set has got printed wooden textures all over the sides, the top, as well as on the other side as well. And onto the bottom of the box is just plain black printed paper. Now we move on to the back of the box. There's this band over here that shows all the figures and their accessories in this box set. Plus that little mini figure of Wolverine. Now we're going to remove this little band at the bottom. It's taped to the bottom of the box. Sliding that band off, we see a full version of the entire artwork on the box. The TV Mastermind Mojo is over here. And in the background, you can see multiple screens of Longshot and Dazzler in action, plus a little couple of screens featuring the little Wolverine. There appears to be a small feature of Spiral over here, and that's a good sign that she's gonna come out next year on that Retro Cardback series. There's a description of Mojo and his Mojo world over here, plus description of Longshot and Dazzler over here as well. And I'd just like to come back to the front of the box, where we now see that same Mojo world logo over here, except now you can feel that it's textured and embossed on the front. So that's a nice touch for an exclusive box set. So now let's get this box set open. So inside the box set, everything is held in place by the plastic free packaging. So over here, we have a box of Dazzler. Again, cool artwork and her name sticker on the, on the front. This is also embossed with texture. The box also has a cool remote control deco with a couple of buttons and their respective functions. And of course, the X-Men logo at the top and a little red dot on the top of the box for the infrared connectivity. The other paper baggies held in place by the cardboard inserts are for parts that make up Mojo. So just pulling them off the back and getting everything out of there. And now we can see the rest of what's behind those cardboard inserts. And we have a TV guide style box. This is a good nod to those TV guides from the 80s and 90s as you can see over here. Dated December 89 and March 92. And coming around to the back of the box. We know that this TV guide box has long shot inside. And of course, not to forget having a final look at the box insert. Once again, more screens featuring all the characters in this box set. So this entire box set is really novel because now you have a TV guide to go with your TV as well as a remote control for you to change the channels and navigate Mojo World. So now let's unbox Dazzler. She's held in place in the box with a cardboard insert, a smaller baggie for her accessories, and the main figure is on that bigger baggie. And this is what she looks like straight out of the box. And the smaller baggie contains all the accessories for Dazzler. We have two relaxed interchangeable hands and two multicolored effect parts. The effect parts are cast in a translucent yellow plastic, letting the light in quite well. There's pink and green paint for different parts of the effect part to make them look interesting. And they're also exactly the same sculpt as what we've got with previous figures. Her splayed hands are cast in a light blue plastic and there's enough sharp sculpting work so you can see the lines in her fingers and her palms. Her left hand also has flesh tone paint applied on the fingers to make it look like finger gloves. The spare hands are articulated inwards as well as outwards. So of course the effect parts work well with the alternate splayed hands. And Dazzler looks great channeling her powers. I just wish she had some alternate grabbing hands and a microphone accessory. And that would really make this Dazzler figure 
much more playable. Looking at her sculpt, she's on the new Shriek body, and that means that she's got better curvier proportions and a more muscular look compared to the previous Dazzler release on the Retro Carded series. Another good feature on the Shriek body is that she also has pinless double jointed elbows and knees. However, being on that completely reused Shriek body mole, her only unique sculpted parts are just her head sculpt. Her new head sculpt is of course a massive improvement on the previous Dazzler release, with of course the digital dot matrix printing technique. So she's got really sharp paint applications for her blonde eyebrows, her big and expressive blue eyes with really dramatic eyeshadow, and of course also very nice printed on lipstick. Color palette is similar to the previous Dazzler figure, but this entire face sculpt just looks really well put together with the digital printing technique. She's still got that really stern and serious expression on her face, and I also do like that her red headband is a separate piece of red plastic. So all around, that means really neat and clean lines between that headband and her blonde hair sculpt. She's got a longer hairstyle now with good sculpting, so you can see all those locks and textures in her hair, and that is also brought out by a darker yellow wash. So it's similarly good sculpting work from the previous version, but the longer hairdo does make her look more glamorous. And overall, the entire head sculpt is a good improvement and upgrade for Dazzler. Most of the rest of her body is cast in that light blue plastic for her outfit, with only flash tone plastic used for her right shoulder joint. There's also flash tone paint applied on her arms, one hit on her right bicep. And once again, there's also very clean separation between the paint and the plastics. So she's got a long blue fitting glove on her right arm. On her left arm, there's flash tone paint for where her sleeve ends on her left forearm, and also flash tone paint for the half finger gloves on her left hand. The star symbol on her torso is yellow, very striking and vibrant and also clean, which is also similarly good work from the previous version of Dazzler, except that the previous logo was painted in gold. I don't really have a I don't really have a preference between the yellow or gold because they both pop on the blue outfit. There's generally good sculpting work and definition for her ab muscles, and very nice definition all the way around the back of the figure as well. I do however want to point out that we still see those two unsightly holes on the back of the figure, and I really hope that moving forward Hasbro needs to fill in these holes. On her left calf we see a band of red paint, plus also an application of yellow paint on her right calf for that star logo once more. Once again these are good design elements of Dazzler's outfit, and we also see that on the previous version of Dazzler as well. She's still got a standard Shriek articulation, so that means a ball hinge at her neck, so that spins 360, and you also get a little bit of sideways tilting. She gets good range looking down, and a little range going up, hindered by her hair sculpt, swivel hinge at her shoulder for 360 spin, as well as going out quite far beyond 90 degrees, so we've got the bicep for 360 spin as well, double jointed, pinless, hinged elbows for very good range, she can also touch her head and her shoulder, so we'll hinge at the wrist for 360 spin, articulating in as well as out, mid torso ball joint, so that spins 360, and there's also sideways tilting, she also gets a decent range bending forward, as well as backward ball joints at the hips that get a decent split, no problems going forward and backward as well. Thigh swivel for 360 spin, double jointed pinless knees for very good range, ankle tilt upwards and downwards, and finally ankle pivot that goes quite a good range outwards and inwards. Dazzler could probably use an alternate head sculpt with a singing expression, but I suppose her current accessories with the effect parts and alternate hands are adequate. The head swaps also work great between the figures so you can have her win different looks for her outfit and hairstyles, and you can also borrow some compatible parts, like the bomber jacket piece and the cuffs for her gloves, so you can have a Dazzler with a more varied look. And that's entirely possible because this previous figure should still be available on clearance at a lot of different websites or stores. Next up, we're unboxing Longshot. So over here, I'm going to slice that little bit of tape on the bottom of the box. Once again, the figure 
is also held in place by a cardboard insert. A smaller baggie over here for his accessories and the main figure is held in place by the rest of the cardboard insert and getting the figure out of the main bigger paper baggie and here he is. In the smaller paper baggie what we have is two interchangeable hands and a knife. Being born in a different dimension, Longshot has only three fingers and a thumb. So you can see that on these unique sculpts for his hands. The hands are cast in a flesh tone plastic with good definition. And you also see the lines in the back of his fingers and fingernails as well. The left open hand has an in and out hinge so it articulates inwards. While the right gripping hand has an up and down hinge so it's articulated downwards. And here you see the outward range of the left hand as well as the upward range on the right hand. The knife is cast in a silver grey plastic with a couple of details on the blade as well as the ribbed texture for the handle. The handle is painted in black paint and you see the same details on the other side of the knife as well. The alternate hands work well with the figure along with that knife. So you can get him into different poses getting ready for some knife throwing action. The knife also fits snugly into that brown holster that's strapped to his right thigh. Sculpt wise, Longshot is on a brand new sculpt with new parts all over the figure. Over here you can see he's a vast improvement on the previous release of Longshot from the Toy Biz Marvel Legends line with much better proportions and engineering and definitely a better looking head sculpt as well. He is however missing his trusty sling bag that was included on the Toy Biz version. And he also has different looks for his belt, which are colored brown and blue in different versions of in the comic. Most of the figure is cast in black plastic, while the accessories and belts and straps are cast in brown plastic, with flash tone plastic for the rest of his exposed parts, like his hands, his neck, as well as his head sculpt. I like the good sculpting work for the expression on Longshot's face. I like that he looks determined, but at the same time also shows his optimistic nature with his powers of good luck. We also see the digital printing technique with sharp applications of yellow for his eyebrows, blue in his eyes, and some colors on his lips. He's also got his trademark mullet hairstyle with good sculpting work once again. You see all that texture and locks of hair that's also brought out nicely with a subtle yellow wash. So all that texture and sculpting in his hair is also good work. And that really brings everything together and stands out, particularly with his really angular square jaw. So the overall look and sculpting of this head sculpt is great work. His torso is a black plastic with a high popped up collar that leads down to that zip down the middle of his shirt. That zip is painted in silver which nicely breaks up all the black on the figure and the white paint for that sculpted star logo on his right part of his chest also is very sharply painted and really pops against that black shirt. He's got a brown bandolier across the front of his torso, good sculpting for the pockets and you can see the blades all painted in silver all around his bandolier. He's got quite a square sculpt to show those 80s shoulder pads on his outfit. There are also wrinkles sculpted nicely into his arms and that leads down to his sleeves where you see some cuffs before we get to his exposed flash tone hands. Interestingly, his left hand is sculpted holding those three blades which are painted in silver and those three blades do appear removed from his bandolier. So that's a nice little bit of attention to detail. Moving to the back of his torso is just plain black but you do see some sculpted wrinkles as well as muscle definition. His belt is also a separate brown piece with a couple of straps and pouches sculpted on. Each pouch has a hit of silver paint for the button on it so that's probably where he keeps the rest of his weapons and supplies. Silver paint is also applied to the buckle on the middle of his belt as well as some adjustable straps which are present on both his belt as well as the holster on his right thigh. The rest of his legs are a plain black plastic but they also have some sculpted detail for wrinkles around his hips, muscle definition down his thighs and this leads to black boots. The boots have a pouch on the outsides, once again pouches with silver paint for the button and then on his feet he's got sharp toed boots and those boots are sculpted with more rigid structure. So there's a nice touch of detail. Even though it's all the same black plastic, the sculpting actually brings out the different materials that Longshot would be wearing on his legs. 
For articulation, Longshot does have a newly engineered neck design. So he's got a ball joint at the bottom of the neck and also a hinge ball at the top of the neck. So you do get some good range of sideways turning, swiveling his head around. You also get quite good sideways tilting from the two ball joints combining. So that's quite expressive tilts. The ball joints and the hinge also give you pretty good range. He's able to look down that far and tuck his chin into his chest. While backward range is also pretty decent, but part of it is also hindered by his mullet hair sculpt. He's got a swivel hinge at the shoulder so it spins 360 and it also goes out just that far. Swivel at the bicep for 360 spin, pinless double jointed elbows for very good range and that's really necessary for Longshot who uses a lot of his powers by throwing projectiles. He's got a swivel hinge at the wrist for 360 swivel and going in as well as out. He's got a mid torso ab crunch so he goes forward that much as well as backward a decent bit and that's not hindered by that plastic bandolier across his chest. Swivel at the waist for 360 spin. Ball joints at the hips that do go out that far. It's partially hindered when you have that knife stored on his right. And we also have no problems going forward and backward. Swivel at his thigh for 360 spin. Double jointed pinless knees as well and that's good range. Swivel at the boot for 360 spin. Ankle tilt upwards and downwards a decent range. And finally quite generous ankle pivot upwards as well as inwards. The articulation feels fluid on this newly engineered body and it definitely bodes well for Hasbro's anticipated reuse of this body for more characters clad in leather suits in future. It also poses very well in flight poses and for me that's really necessary for an agile character like Longshot. So among the other cardboard inserts that hold most of Mojo's pieces, we also have a little figurine of Wolverine. Now taking him out of this little paper baggie, there's also another paper bag that holds a couple of other parts like some pipes for Mojo and also a black stand for Wolverine. Well Hasbro considers this a separate figure, to me this is more like an accessory. Of course Wolverine has a brand new sculpt with a stylized cartoony design to him. His head is cast in yellow plastic with the entire faceplate in black plastic attached to the front, white paint for the eyes, as well as his teeth, some flesh tone over here for his mouth area, and also a little bit of pink for his tongue. This figure only has one point of articulation and that's the ball joint in his neck. So that's, that head gets some good range of motion going all the way around, some up and down, and also some sideways tilting. His arms are a blue plastic with flesh tone paint for the arms and some silver plastic attached for his claws. The rest of the figure is also a yellow plastic, several paint applications like black for his tiger stripes, red for his belt, black for that X along the middle, blue for his pants, while on his legs that's more yellow plastic with separate blue plastic attached for his boots. The same paint applications can be seen on the back of the figure, which strangely has a hole on his back. So besides having just one point of articulation, this figure's engineering and balance is also strange. He sculpted in his typical Wolverine crouched and hunched position and with that large and heavy head, he can't actually stand up on his own. And I'm also quite disappointed how none of those arms are able to at least swivel where they attach to his main body. So they're all stuck in this position and you really need to tab in the figure to his stand in order to get him stood up at all. So this extra plastic probably adds to the cost of this set. And while it's a cute little figure, it doesn't really have much playability to it and overall ends up as the least interesting accessory or figure for this set in my opinion. I freed out the rest of Mojo's parts in paper bags from the cardboard inserts so I'm just getting all these parts out of the paper bags for now. So that's his base over here and now we're getting to his I mean fat body, getting also probably the upper part of his torso out from this bag and now getting the back part of his mechanical scorpion like machine and here is probably an alternate laughing head sculpt and lastly in this bag we're gonna have some alternate hands. 
And not forgetting those two tubes that we got out from the back containing the baby Wolverine. First we take Mojo's base and we flip it around and get those insect legs out of the way. The base kind of looks like it's packed upside down and once you move those insect legs out of the way you can see the pegs where his body is supposed to peg in. So now you take his main fat body, look at the pegs, match them and peg them in. Like so. You just want to watch out for the couple of spikes around that base where it's supposed to keep his fat body on and make sure that his fat body fits within those spikes and pegs securely to the base. Now you take his upper torso and move his arms out of the way. The pole below it is square so you want to match that up to the peg and then push them in together. I actually did it off camera but you will need a little bit of strength to mate the upper torso and the lower torso together and after that you just want to rotate him so that of his upper torso matches up with his belly button. Now we move him all the way around to the back and you see these two C-shaped holes. That's where you take that mechanical backing piece and peg these in there. It should go in smoothly and now there's a big hole on the back of the backing piece and that's where you take his scorpion tail and peg it in there like so. And now flipping it around up top. And now for the final touch you take these tubes, look for the angular end, and now you just want to plug that into the mechanical backing and plug the other end into his shoulder part. And it's quite a snug fit. And doing likewise for the other side, plugging that in, it's quite a snug fit to his shoulder. After you assemble Mojo you will realize he's got sort of like a floating effect. And that's from those clear plastic pieces at the bottom of his mechanical chair and those pieces would support him giving him that floating effect. The insect like legs look like they're strangely positioned. So to get them posed properly you need to get them rotated at this joint over here flipping them around 180 so they do go up and then come down and contact with the ground. So doing the same for the rest of the other legs and finally, you're free to pose the front arms any way you like to help him grab and point at things. And now that I finally put Mojo together and posed him correctly, he cuts quite an intimidating and grotesque figure at the same time. And at once he's looking disgusting and menacing, particularly with all these mechanical parts on his body and that really super evil expression and smile on his face. By default, he comes with one relaxed left hand and one pointing right hand. For his alternate hands, the right one is also relaxed to match his left relaxed hand, while his left alternate hand has a gripping position. These are cast in yellow plastic with paint for the pockmarks all over his body. This paint is a light brown. There's also grey for his sharp fingernails. And there's also a bit of subtle shading at certain parts of his fingers like in between his thumb and his index finger. There's also that same shading on the bottom of those hands. So that's a nice touch of paint. The alternate hands are articulated inwards as well as outwards. So the alternate hands pop onto the figure just fine and the gripping hand is great. It has sufficient strength to hold up other figures as you can see. Now we're having a look at his alternate head sculpt together with his default one. And I must say that the work done by Hasbro over here is fantastic. The overall look on both head sculpts are maniacal and soulless at the same time. Most of the head is sculpted in a yellow plastic. And because of how fat and grotesque Mojo is, all the fat around his neck is also sculpted oozing out from below his chin. His eyes are sculpted with a really haunting expression with the lines on his forehead emphasizing how his eyes are held open by those attachments sculpted on the sides and his forehead as well. All these attachments are sharply painted with silver paint and really adds another dimension of detail to the head sculpt. His eyes and shading all over his face are painted with a digital dot matrix printing technique. So once again you see very sharp paint applications for the whites and yellows in his eyes, the pink for the shading around his eyes, once again, also adding that freakish nature of those technical modifications. And there's also some more of that shading on his second chin. Once again, emphasizing how fat he is and his disgusting nature is brought out by those pock marks also painted on his second chin. His mouth is a separate pink plastic insert with white paint for the teeth. The white paint on the default head sculpt looks a little messy. You can see that not all the teeth are painted in some parts. 
So that is a small letdown to an overall phenomenal head sculpt. Both heads also appear, both heads also appear to have the same mechanical head sculpt with all those cables for his hair. Even though they are the same sculpt, they're given different paint applications, which is a nice varied touch. You see some reds and blues to highlight some of those cables, and that adds some depth to the texture that's all nicely sculpted. In the process of popping on his alternate head sculpt, I realized that because of the ball joint in his mid torso, plus that soft and flexible dumbbell joint in his neck, it's really quite a pain to put his alternate head sculpt on. All the ball joints just keep shifting, and this soft dumbbell just doesn't want to go into that head sculpt. I applied some heat to soften the plastic and pop on the alternate head. However, I will say that the socket sitting on that ball joint can get a little tight and that would cause a little bit of twisting stress on that really long dumbbell joint in his neck. So just handle this alternate head sculpt with care. Mojo is quite an impressive figure because of his sheer size. However, there are some aspects of him that I do find less desirable and I'll go on to talk about it in a little bit. Most of his main body and his arms are cast in that same yellow plastic. And simply, and simply because this is an exclusive, I can see that Hasbro has put in some extra care for the paintwork and shading. The shading is present on the bottom of his belly, around his shoulders and his underarms, and the insides of his forearms as well, as his hands. All that shading is also further complemented by very gross looking pock markings all over his skin. So despite most of his body being that smooth, bulbous sculpt, the shading and those pock marks and a layer of depth on the top left side of his chest is where you see a port with a line that goes all the way back to his mechanical seat. The line is painted in grey and the port is a shiny silver. Just checking out those details in his underarm area, that is also really nice sculpting work to capture all that saggy skin along with his huge moves, which are also sculpted with actual nipples and the shading bringing out the layer of fat that hangs on his upper torso. I do also want to point out that on top of the smooth sculpt of his fat body, there are random little pimples sculpted all over as you can see over here on the left side of his chest and also on the front of his belly and that also adds another layer of gross on this maniacal character. And finally we also see that huge belly button surrounded by all that fat that's also being held up by these spikes on his mechanical seat. I also want to point out that his belly is made from a soft, hollow plastic. So not just looking disgusting, it also kind of feels disgusting because you can press it and squish it in. So I do hope that this soft, flexible plastic can last over the years. But I'll say that even though this kind of is a cost-saving measure, this adds another experiential dimension to having a figure like this because he's fat and squishy to the touch. Now we look at his arms. There's a little bit of wrinkly skin over here that's, that's sculpted above his elbow. There's a port that's sculpted and painted in silver on his shoulder. And that's where you connect these tubes that lead onto his mechanical seat. Now because Mojo is made up of parts that you assemble straight out of the box, these pipes don't want to stay plugged in as you articulate his arms. And very often, they tend to just want to pop out as you move and pose the figure. So that's really a point of annoyance for me. Now we look at the rest of the techno organic sculpt that shows how Mojo is attached irreversibly to his mechanical chair. Cables are sculpted all the way down the back of his head and the rest of his body. There's more of that techno organic connectors sculpted and painted in silver. They look to be stuck directly into him. And there's once again red and blue paint to add some visual complexity to the bunch of cables. However, the paint is missing on the back of his upper torso, so there's a slight letdown. In addition to the reds and blues, we also see applications for green paint, so that makes the backing look more interesting with an additional hit of color. You see more of those cables on the back of his seat. Once again, the reds, blues, and greens making the back look visually interesting despite this being the back of the figure. I like how there's more details and paint also for a few switches and ports on the back of his chair. Nice sculpting of the tag detail, and these two over here look like thrusters. However, they do appear a little dull compared to the rest of the ports and switches because they're not painted. And as we move away from the back of his seat, onto the top, we see this huge scorpion-like stinger tail. It's sculpted in the grey plastic, similar to the rest of his mechanical seat. And it's given segments that lead all the way to the stinger at the front. However, this stinger is cast in a solid plastic and you're not able to articulate or bend it in any way. And now we zoom into that menacing stinger. It is attached to the tail on a ball joint, and there are so many needles and blades on the front. 
And once again, Hasbro has made it look interesting by using different tones of grey and silver plastic for some of the needles over here in the middle, as well as the blades. And I do like how the blues and reds also match up quite well with the other paints on the rest of the figure. And now we come back down to the front of the figure and we have a look at the base of his seat with all those spider legs. Now this spider base is quite impressively constructed. Once again made from that same metallic grey plastic with blue paints and red paints for some indicators. Those spider legs really add another level of creepy to this figure because these insectoid features just look scary below such a big and grotesque character. The front two legs are sculpted with claw hands, however these are stuck and you cannot articulate them. The other six legs are identical sculpts attached to the rest of his side and there's some line and panel detail that's cool to look at. However, I think those details could be further brought out by a black wash. So overall, I will say that the sculpt of this figure is quite impressive and definitely worthy of being a convention exclusive. I like how everything comes together to make this figure look maniacal and intimidating. So after looking at the sculpt and paint of the new Mojo figure, here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the Toy Biz Builder figure. And you can clearly see that over the years there's much advancements in the engineering, sculpting, and production. So the new Mojo definitely is much bigger and more intimidating because of his size and presence. The modern painting techniques means this new figure has a cleaner look. Though he does come with much fewer colors compared with the Toy Biz one, where a lot of those sculpting and painting was probably done manually, by hand, resulting in a much more dingy and dirty look, full of character. However, the new one just looks more put together with much more playability and posability, particularly in those insectoid legs. And despite just being a fat blob, he does come with more improved articulation on that torso as well as that head. So before I cover the articulation on this figure, I just want to say that because he's made from different parts coming out of a box, all those parts tend to pop off quite easily as you pose and maneuver this guy. So that will be a point of annoyance to a lot of collectors. I already showed how the pipes do come off. And next up is that scorpion tail. As you rotate it, it does tend to pop off as well. The mechanical backing on that figure is also simply slaughtered in and might also easily come off as you pose and handle this guy. And also with the upper torso that you can rotate and move around, that also pops off super easy. So you have to handle this guy with a little bit of care and getting him posed can be a little challenging. This figure is full of articulation and we start with the ball joint at the top of that stinger. So you can move it all the way around as well as spin it and swivel it. There's also a swivel at the base of the tail where you attach it to his seat. So you can swing it left as well as right and it does tend to pop off. So you might want to just make sure to hold it into its port as you swing it around. His neck is on the double ball dumbbell joint so you get to turn it just a little bit sideways because of the interference of the cables in his hair. You can't get much sideways wiggle out of that head. He looks down, not that much, and up just that little bit. But pushing his head back tends to expose that gap between the fat of his neck and his upper torso. He's got a swivel hinge at his shoulders so you can swing them forward and backward and once again you see that pipe popping off and it also goes out pretty far. Swivel at the bicep for 360 spin, double jointed pinless elbows so that gives you quite a good range and he can actually touch his own head. Swivel hinge at the wrist for 360 spin as well as articulating a good deal in and out. He's got a mid torso ball joint but that peg is once again also really long and soft so you might feel a little bit of flex while you're turning him sideways but that should be sufficient range before his arms start interfering with his backing plate. That ball joint does give him some sideways tilting as well. He only gets a little bit of forward range, but quite a bit backward. However, that exposes the gap in that ball joint between his upper and lower torso as well. Having no real organic lower body of his own, he obviously loses a waist swivel. However, these insectoid legs do make up for his lack of real legs. Each one of them has three sets of swivel hinges. One where it connects to the main body, so spinning this much and also getting that much range. 
up and down that hinge, likewise on the second swivel hinge over here, getting some spin as well as up and down range. And finally there's another swivel hinge over here, once again rotating and having that up and down motion. So I count that as 6 points of articulation on each leg and having a total of 8 legs over here on his base that gives him a whopping 48 points of articulation simply from that mechanical insectoid base. So that's really quite impressive and fun to play with, especially since they don't pop off like the rest of his body parts. It does require some effort to make sure that his parts stay together as you pose him, but once you get past that, there's plenty of fun to be had, especially in those insectoid legs. And this guy still oozes a lot of shelf presence. Despite some of his parts coming apart easily, his arms and their joints are quite well engineered. As you can see over here, he's able to hold up the weight of other action figures. So this can make quite fun and engaging battle scenes. And here's a quick hand swapping idea. Mojo's hands do fit onto that Kingpin figure, and that is quite appropriate once you pop on the Shadow King head sculpt as well. For size, Dazzler stands at 6 and an eighth of an inch, and that's about 15 and a half centimeters. Longshot stands at 6 and a quarter inches, and that's about 16 centimeters. To the top of his head, Mojo stands at about 6 and a half inches, and that's about 16 and a half centimeters. To the top of his stinger tail, that's about 8 and 3 quarters of an inch, or about 22 centimeters. At the widest part of his belly, he's about 4 inches wide and that's about 10 centimeters. While the full span of his insectoid legs can reach up to 10 inches and that's about 25 and a half centimeters. And I almost forgot Baby Wolverine, but this stands at 2 and 3 quarter inches and that's about 7 centimeters. For size comparisons, here they are with Doctor Strange and Psylocke. With Jubilee, Juggernaut and Wolverine. And Captain America and Spider-Man. For comparisons with other lines, here they are with some G.I. Joe classified series and some Star Wars Black series. Besides the price point and exclusivity of this set, I would have expected Dazzler and Longshot to come with more accessories like alternate head sculpts, and the baby Wolverine is quite lame. Also, Mojo sometimes feels like he's falling apart a little bit in your hands as you pose him. But as it is, I do like the new body mold for Longshot, and the head sculpts for all three characters in this set are on point. And when he stays in one piece, Mojo is quite well built and engineered. If you can't afford to get this set, I recommend that you do because it looks a step above the regular retail version for Mojo. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, subscribe to my channel, or even hit the super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.